Michael Bell and James Fanshall have trained thousands of winners between them. Bell is best known as the handler of Motivator and Sariska, a derby winner and an Oaks victor. And Fanshawe has handled Soviet Song, who was brilliant at two and as an older horse. And the really talented sprinters Deacon Blues, Society Rock and the Tin Man. Neither of them, however, have ever had a runner at the Breeders' Cup. In 2020, that will change. Fanshawe runs Ordera in the Maker's Mark Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf. So we've come to his pristine Newmarket Yard Pegasus Stables to find out a little bit more. James, considering the number of Group 1 winners you've trained over the years, it's extraordinary really that you've never had a runner at the Breeders' Cup. No, it's, it's, well, it's really exciting to have one and um, I've been thinking, well, should we have had you know, there must have been horses that passed through our hands that should have, should have, should have been there. But this is our first go. Uh, we had, um, we won the the EP Taylor the day after the Breeders' Cup when it was held at Woodbine. Um, but this is our first runner, and we were really looking forward to it. Ordaria has sort of come from nowhere, and it's fair to say she's a bit of a character. Oh, very much character. And um, you know, earlier in the year we were going going nowhere. She was unlucky at Kempton, and then she she ran bad at Ponty. And but we always, I always had. Um, the, the Louis Romanet in the back of my mind as a target and um, um, because we won it before twice you know and uh, um, and that came off so after the Romanet we thought right well the next step with a group one winner is, is, is the opera and if you do well there when well, they're, they're still in good form well it'd be great to have a crack at the, um, the Breeders' Cup. Of course in the past we have seen handicappers go through the ranks and become group horses but it doesn't happen every day of the week. I mean you're saying the, the Romanet was her, her sort of target but she was a massive price on the day. How, how confident were you? <laughs> I didn't think she'd come on soft ground and it was bottomless there so but we were committed and um, it was that or the Atlanta and um, we got it. Um, Alison Swinburne her owner said I definitely want to stay at a mile and a quarter and it was either there or Sandown and, and so we went to France and uh, uh, and she she um, she came good, and of course, in some ways, she ran even better when third in the Lopra behind Tanawa, who, who looks to be a really good horse for Derma Weld. So, you know, the form has now solidified itself. Uh, yeah, very much so. And um, you know, she wasn't beat; she's beat just beaten about a length in, in the Opera. And um, I think probably like a few of them, she was undone by the lack of pace. And hopefully, in Keenan, there'll be a, a decent pace. You know, she's, she's run well on, on quicker ground, but she obviously goes on it when it, is, when it is slow, which a lot of the Americans won't. And Iritz Mendithabau, who's formed a good relationship with her, will take them out? Yeah, yeah, he's, you know, he's won an aunt a million. And uh, I think the most important thing with Ordari is having someone um, who knows her and has got um, faith in her. And he's got a lot of faith in her and, and is keen that we should run. It really is sort of almost the trainer equivalent to Liverpool, of course, took 30 years to win back the Premier League. You are now trying to win a Breeders' Cup after 30 years. Just, just for a man who's trained champion hurdle winners, group one winners, to win a Breeders' Cup race, what would that mean for the skeleton man? <laughs> oh, God, well, we've got to do, do it first. But, uh, um, you know, that, that, that's what we try and do nowadays is, is, is if we've got a horse, try and uh, find the best possible race it can win. And there's, there's nothing better, better than winning a Breeders' Cup. She's come out of the race, come out of the opera in good form, and you just see her having a buck and a kick now. She worked nice this morning, so you hope the trip goes well. She gets a nice draw, and luck in running. So, uh, um, you know, but you know, hopefully she'll run very well because you know she's got some class. Across town, Bell relies on the Learjet in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. He flew home in the Norfolk Stakes at Royal Ascot in June. Can the Learjet close down on this long-time leader? Golden Power from the Learjet, they have it between them, racing up to the line, the Learjet getting close, Golden Power needs the line, the Learjet has gone up! The Learjet has won the Norfolk in the dying strides. Michael, it's pretty extraordinary, really, that you and James went to the same school at the same time. You're multiple Group 1 winning trainers, you're a multiple Classic winning trainer, and yet you've, neither of you have ever had a runner at the Breeders' Cup. I think it's uh, you've got to have the right horse and there's no point travelling to the other side of the world or to America if you haven't got the right horse because it's just get your backside kicked, uh, it's a long way to go. So you've got to have the right horse and 
there's al also been other alternatives to run our good horses in, sort of the Wigmore Halls, Big Oranges ran in Hong Kong, Australia, and so they had alternative objectives. So yes, while we've had some success overseas, we've just never had the right horse to take to America. So the obvious question is, why is the Learjet the right horse? First of all, he won an, an in in your win race at Ascot. Um, Norfolk Stakes. Which makes, uh, makes it more attractive financially because it's a big cost getting over there. Um, and Sheikh Farhad's buying into it, the owner as well. He's a big fan of the meeting. So you've got the owner supporting the idea. You've got the horse being the right horse to, to, to take there, in my opinion. And while it's an experiment going a mile with him, we feel his style of racing that he's got every chance of getting it. The story with this horse is, is a good fun one for the Bell family in many ways because of course didn't start off as a cattle horse. Did, did you know right at the start that this might be a horse you could run and sell? When uh, he arrived in the yard we were pretty, there was, he was been pre-training with uh, a guy called Robson Aguiar in, um, in Ireland and the vibes were very positive and obviously the, the Covid situation meant the, the breeze ups were going to be uh, the breeze up sales were all in, in the balance at the time whether they were even going to go ahead or not so um, anyway so we got the horse and you say he, he won his maiden very well at Yarmouth and he was very much in the shop window uh, I was watching the race actually at home I remember the telephone as soon as the horse crossed the line a text from Sheikh Farhad is he for sale you know um, so uh, the answer was yes and pretty quickly we agreed a deal and um, obviously from Sheikh Fahd's point of view, he went and won at Royal Ascot. It, I think it was O'Sheen's first winner for the Qatar operation at Ascot. So it ticked that box and he's given them a lot of fun. He's been second in two group races set subsequently. Um, and I feel the step up to a mile is, is probably going to see him in a better light. I think slow ground suits him, um, as we saw at Ascot. Uh, but he wouldn't want it to be a, a proper endurance test. That's why I think going at... Uh, round a two-turn uh, mile will help him. Round a bend in Keeneland, uh, I think he's got every chance. He's a big horse. He weighs the very nearly 500 kilos. And he's got size and scope and a big long stride on him. And he's not, as you can see, look at him here. He's a sort of quiet old thing. Uh, good temperament. He's not a buzzy, sweaty Like horsey. his trainer. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and also, he's. I know he's had a few races, but his races have been well spaced out. He's been... We've trained him very kindly in between. We haven't drilled him at all. Um, no, he's just a, he's been a pleasure to have about the place. And of course, you're a Derby winning trainer. You're an Oaks winning trainer with Motivator and Sariska. Um, and that incredible day at Ascot in the Ascot Gold Cup with Big Orange. But to win a Breeders' Cup race, would that go right up there with those achievements? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously when you train as long as I have, you know, you're obviously... You're not 100, though, are <laughs> I, know, I mean, but, you're, you're uh, trying to make out your age. <laughs> yeah, no, but, you know, we've been trained for, you know, a significant amount... You know, over half my life I've been a trainer now. So, uh, and obviously, the fact that you're still training means you must have had some success, otherwise I wouldn't be still doing the job. So, yes, we've had our fair share of success, but, to, you know, to win the Breeders' Cup or a Breeders' Cup race would be um, a great achievement and we'd be a good credit to everyone back at home here. And finally, have you done anything special with him? I mean, obviously, we often call you Ding Dong, but it's the Ding Dong as the stalls open that is very different in America. European horses often miss the break. Have you, have you tried to get him used to anything at this no, stage? No, well, we took him to Chelmsford the other day uh, to go left, to go, to go round a bend, because obviously he hasn't, all his racing has been on a straight track, so we just wanted to familiarise him with t uh, turning left, or on a left-hand turn when he was great, switch leads, Oshim is very happy with him. Um, but read the stalls, the fact that he's been running over five furlongs and, and or six furlongs, he's got very good gate speed and to be honest with you, we don't want to be making the running anyway so i think a lot depends if you're how what, where you're drawn there doesn't mm -hmm. it if you're drawn on the inside it's a big advantage if he's drawn deep on the track then you're a slightly a hostage to what's going on in front of you because you can't be busting them to get to the front from that wide draw so not that we want to make the running anyway but we'd have to you know, at the end of the day when you've also got an experienced jockey and a jockey who knows the horse you've slightly got to lead the driving to the rider Summing up your chance then? I think depending on the draw and how he takes the journey, I think he'll travel well um, to America, God willing. He's very much in the mix because he's so unexposed over this trip and I think it can eke out improvement.
this is one of those days as a racing fan, you wake up so excited about these 14 championship events. Championships to be decided in virtually every division. Look at this, Aranti. He's come from last to second. This surely has to be one of the super horses of all time. This is unbelievable. Zenyatta. Raven Pass and Frankie de Torre have won the classic. Arrowgate steals the show. St. Nicholas Abbey. 